Hello everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to day nine of the holiday card series for 2023. So recently I got an order from Simus Stamp with tons of sequins and little confetti bits and things like that. And it really got me thinking that I wanted to create a shaker card for Christmas. Now, a while back, I made a shaker card for Valentine's Day and I loved it so much. And all of these little sequin mixes and shaker bits made me think of it. It was a long mini slimline card with a, a large die cut greeting. This one says XOXO. And I thought, I want to make that a Christmas card, like make it a Christmas version. And I didn't have a die that I liked for that. So I came up with a cut file for my Cricut. So this uh, Mary Slimline card is actually a free SVG file that you can download. Um, I'll have a link down below. Just go to the blog post for this particular day nine card of the holiday card series, and you can download this free SVG file to use in the cutting machine of your choice. Um, or you could hand cut it. This, these are very pretty straightforward lines. You could definitely hand cut this design as well. So I'm protecting my Cricut map, putting that clear sheet back on top, and I've made sure to keep those interior pieces of the letter R so that I can add that to the card later. So here's my card base. I'm making a slimline card. So the finished size is eight and a half wide by three and a half tall. So to create a slimline card base, I started with cardstock that was eight and a half wide by seven tall so that I could score it at three and a half and fold it in half to that final size. So once again, the size of cardstock I use to uh, create that card base is eight and a half wide by seven tall. And then I scored it at three and a half. So I'm now going to work on the front of my card. This is going to be the back wall of my shaker. And I wanted to ink blend onto it just like that original card that I'd made back in February. But um, I thought, you know what, I'm going to protect the back of the card with some post-it tape. And then while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and mask off the edges. And this is just going to make it so that if anyone looks at the, like a side view of my card, there won't be any of the red ink showing on the edge of the cardstock. You could definitely skip this step. Some might call it a waste of post-it tape, but I find that it really lends itself to a very clean finished card. So I'm going to be using two colors of red ink. These are both from Simon Says Stamp from their original ink line. They are two of my favorites. I hope Simon never retires these colors. They are Lipstick Red and Merlot. I'm starting with Lipstick Red and I'm blending that in from the bottom and fading it out. I want it to fade out at the top of the letters. So I'm constantly rechecking to make sure that it works with my shaker window that I've cut. So now I'm bringing in Merlot and I'm bringing in this darker red at the very bottom. I want it to fade up, but again, I'm going to double check and make sure that that color is going to show in those letters. I realized I needed to bring up that Merlot even more. I'm going to check again and that's about the right height where I need it. So I blend it across using that color, just blending up from the blending up from the bottom edge. And then I'm left with this finished blended piece. I'm going to check it one more time. And I realized that there really wasn't much of a fade on the R and Y on the end. So I'm just going to use whatever ink is left on my brush and just very gently bring that color up just a little bit more so that it fills that space and looks a little bit more even all the way across the word. So now that my ink blending's done, I'm going to remove that post-it tape. And I'm going to double check this one more time to make sure it's exactly what I want. And then I'm going to move on and make the front of my shaker. This is the front wall of the shaker. So I've got some acetate that I've cut to just a little bit smaller than my card front. So this is eight and one quarter wide by three and one quarter tall. Taking some liquid glue, this is honeybee precision glue. I put that all around the letters and then I'm going, um, you know, on the interior of the letters and then I'm going all around those so that I can adhere the acetate to this front wall of my shaker. I'll press that down and then now I need to add the interior pieces of the letter R. Remember how I said I would save those? I set them aside and now I'm going to puzzle piece in that letter R and it's just going to float in there. I'm not gluing it down, 
but I am going to add a little bit of glue right to that interior area on each letter R, and then I'm going to bring in that little interior piece. So I'm just gonna position that in, kind of wiggle it around till it's in the right spot. And I'm going to let this dry just a minute or so before I remove the letter R from around it. Once I have both of the interior pieces settled into those areas, I'm gonna let it dry. And I'm trying to make sure I don't get any glue touching the actual letter so that I can then lift the letter off and remove it. And I've just got that interior piece hanging on left behind. All right, so the front wall of my shaker is ready for adhesive. I'm now going to create the well of the shaker where all of the shaker bits are going to go on the inside. I like to use two layers of foam adhesive for this. So I just double back my long roll of tape so that it's two layers and then I can adhere them together. I'm putting the foam adhesive right around those letters, making sure it's nice and clean. And I'm making sure that I adhere these really, really well and carefully around those letters so that if people look at the side of my card, it doesn't look too messy. I hope that makes sense. If you've ever put together a shaker card and then kind of looked at it from a side view, sometimes they can look a little bit messy. It's almost like seeing how the sausage was made. So I'm trying to make this very, very clean all around those edges. I also cut that adhesive in half to have more narrow strips to finish off that area around the shaker. To help me get the shaker put together just perfectly, I'm going to use the corner of my score buddy. You could also use the interior area of your Misty tool or anything like that. So here's the Jolly Santa mix from Pretty Pink Posh. I'm going to put some of those out into the well of my shaker area. And in hindsight, I probably put a little too many, but um, I really wanted to have those. And I added additional sequins. This is from Picket Fence. This is the Iridescent Moonshine. Some of my favorite sequins. I use them all the time. So I added those in for a little bit of sparkle. So then I removed the release paper on my foam tape and I just held down the whole shaker while I peeled up the release tape. That keeps it from moving around and possibly making those shaker bits fly and create a mess. I then used the corner of that score buddy just to help line up that bottom corner of my card base and then press that down right down onto the shaker. I'm going to really walk my hands over that, press down all around that frame of foam tape. And then here we are, here is my shaker. I love how that looks. To finish off the card, I'm going to use the Clean Line Christmas stamp set from CZ Design, as well as some evergreen cardstock from Concord and Ninth. I'm stamping this very small, dainty greeting, and I'm planning to uh, use some heat embossing powder over the top in white. So I'm prepping that cardstock with an anti-static powder tool and then using white pigment ink all over that stamp. And I'm really gonna spend some time and dab that stamp with lots of pigment ink so I get a really good impression. When I go to stamp, I'm barely going to let the stamp kiss that cardstock because I want it to keep the very thin, dainty look of this font. So I stamped it twice just to make sure I had a really good impression. And then I sprinkled on some alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. I tapped off the excess and then used a heat tool to melt that embossing powder. And let me tell you, I was super impressed with the clean embossing I got on this. I mean, the detail on this is amazing. I was floored. I then used a microfiber cloth to wipe off any of that anti-static powder that was remaining on my cardstock. And then I used my Tim Holtz mini trimmer to trim this out just to get a nice clean line cut. All right, so here's my greeting. I'm gonna trim it down to be a little bit smaller so it's not quite so wide. And then using my tweezers and that same liquid glue, I'm gluing this down to the front of my card on the left side, right above the words. The liquid glue allows me to wiggle it so it's just right. And that's going to finish the card. Now, if you remember back to my Valentine's Day card, I also had an envelope to go with it. And so I'm not gonna forget that part. I'm gonna quickly create an envelope to go with this slimline card. So I've got this stencil here from Simus's Stamp and a slimline envelope. 
and I'm going to place my stencil right over the top. I'm going to ink blend this design onto my envelope, but just on the left-hand side of the envelope, similar to that Valentine's Day envelope that I did earlier this year. I'm taping that stencil in place, and then I'm using two, those same two colors of red ink. I've got lipstick red and the Merlot, and I'm going to bring it in from that left-hand edge of the envelope, being very careful not to move the stencil. So I'm going to have it fade rather quickly once it's past that edge. And I just want a little bit of this lipstick red going across, um, having it fade out to that edge. And then I'm gonna swap it out and go to the Merlot ink and do the same exact thing. This is basically the same blending that I did for the back wall of my shaker, but this time I'm using a stencil. Now you could change up that shaker design and use a stencil for the background as well. That would be a great way to make the envelope and the shaker card even more cohesive. So after I blended on that Merlot, then I lifted up my stencil and I'm going to use just whatever ink is remaining on my brush just to bring in a little more color, just so that that design isn't so stark white. I needed a little more lipstick red, so I'm gonna add some ink, wipe off most of it, and then bring on just whatever's left to go over that envelope design. All right, blending out that edge really well. And then I grabbed some postage stamps. I've got some, uh, some of these uh, stamps from many years ago that I've been saving. I love this Santa, I think it's just so classic. So I'm gonna add the Santa in that top corner, followed by a snow globe. Now these are postage stamps that just came out this year. They are available now. So um, I'll link to them in the supplies if you want to pick up some of these snow globe postage stamps. And then I added two vintage stamps. In fact, one of them says Christmas 1962, which I think is just really great. So here is the finished card and envelope set. Thanks so much for joining me for day nine of the holiday card series. I will be back on Monday with day 10. And since it is Monday, I will be creating live at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. So please come back and join me. You can uh, chat and talk in the in the live chat area while I create, and we'll be creating a really fun holiday card for day 10. Th thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.